Erichto here talking about problem K, take on meme. We are given a lot of points in leaves of a tree, and this tree describes a tournament between memes. In every leaf, we are given coordinates, like say 3, minus 4. And in every node that has multiple children, we have some competition between our children. And one of those points we will take with a plus, let's say this one. And the remaining ones will be taken with a minus. And now we need to take the sum of them with exactly those pluses or minuses. For example, here, 3, minus 2, and 1 will be 0. And minus 4, minus 2, and 1 will be minus 7. We do that in every node. And we will eventually get node in the root of this tree. We want to maximize its distance from 0, 0. The, to the output, we print the square of that because square is integer. Constraints are on the right. Number of nodes, 10,000. Height of the tree is 10. That's very unusual. Coordinates of points are integers and up to 1,000. Number of children of every node is up to 100. Also a very unusual co uh, constraint. Now, if not for that tree, and instead we just get some points and we want to maximize the sum of them and their final distance from 0, 0, it's a very standard problem, assuming that we can take any subset and sum it up. The solution to that is that um, if there is some direction where we know that the sum of chosen subsets of points will be, then it's optimal to take half plane of everything. So let's say everything belonging to this half plane, you, can, you should take to your subset and it will maximize this distance. The sum of those points will be somewhere here in top right. You don't know which half plane is optimal. Because of that, you should use two pointers and just consider every half plane. Right now, points J, A, and so on belong to your subset. When you rotate your half plane by angle, J will eventually drop, E will be added to it, and like that you maintain the subset. Uh, in take on meme, we have something different. It's a tree, but in every node, we will have some decisions about which one of the nodes, uh, which are one of children we want to take with a plus versus the other ones with minus. So it's almost like a sum of them multiplied by minus one, and one single note is taken differently. How can we approach that? Solution number one is to use Minkowski sum, but first we should notice the following. If Imagine bottom-up DP. If your child tells you what are possible points that it will provide after we decide uh, in its subtree what to do, which child each time to take with a plus, with, uh, the remaining ones with minus, then each child will give you some set of points and a very obs important observation is that only convex hull of those points is important, is relevant. We can drop everything inside of the convex hull. Why is that? Because at the end, every point or every subtree providing you some point will be taken in the final sum with plus or minus. So always, if there is some point and there is some direction that is from 0, 0 direction to the final sum point, the solution, we want to maximize in that direction, and always one of points in the convex hull is better for that. Uh, then, when you have, when you ignore the interior of every convex hull, every child in this bottom of the P will give you a convex hull. Let's erase the interior indeed. And now you need to sum up multiple convex hulls. In what way do you sum them up? You will, from each of them, choose one of points, say this one, this one, and this one. One of them you will take with a plus, the other ones with minus, and the sum of coordinates x and y will be your new possible point. You want to again find a convex hull of this sum. If it was just summing up of convex hull, we would use Minkowski sum. You can read about it in cpalgorithm.com. This is even uh, a picture from that website. Uh, in geometric category, there is Minkowski sum uh, topic with a nice tutorial. We will not discuss it now, but one of convex holes needs to be taken with minus one. Now, possibly it can be done faster, but because of low constraint for k, let's remember k is up to 100, we can iterate which child will be taken with different sign. So let's say this one, the blue one, we will do with plus one, everything else with minus one. This multiplies time complexity by k. But now, if you, let's say, multiply this single special polygon by minus one, you can do Minkowski sum. The time complexity of such a solution is 
O of, and I will look at my notes, that's n times h, times h uh, comes from the fact that you merge in subtrees, and because of that, every point will exist on every node in path to the root. So sum of sizes of subtrees is n times h. Now, you multiply that by k, you iterate which child is the special plus one, and you multiply it by some logarithm. Now, this logarithm, it depends on your exact implementation. If you really do everything naively, so in Minkowski sum, in the final convex hole, you sort all the points from left to right to find convex hole from scratch. Um, I believe it will be n times h, or, or something very similar. You can do it smarter, because if you have a lot of convex holes, uh, they are already sorted. So we can get something smaller here, but it doesn't matter. No matter what logarithm you will have here, that's accepted solution. Of course, more challenging, it would be to get rid of this times k, which is maybe possible. Anyway, there is a second, uh, I think, nicer solution, where we do things greedily and we don't even maintain any convex holes. A uh, common way of at least providing a proof of correctness of this well-known solution of subset of points is to say, if we are given by a well-known, by a magical fairy, if we are given direction towards the solution, then we know what subset of points we should take, let's say those, uh, they belong to some half plane. And now, if we have this direction, then actually we also can simulate that for the whole tree. If we're given this tree, and we know, yeah, we maximize in that direction, for every subtree, we know that at the end, it will be taken with plus or minus in this final direction, so we only want to know two possible points. Let's say point zero minus seven might be extreme, the furthest within that direction that is given to us magically. And also there is a point, say, minus one comma eight, and that is in the opposite direction furthest, according to that direction. So if we are provided direction magically, then we will say what to do, we will know what to do in our subtree. Always it will be, oh yeah, in this subtree, the two extreme points are A and B, the, the sum of points from the subtree. And then when we merge a lot of subtrees, again, it will be easy. It's like a one-dimensional problem for us. We will use doubles there, possibly for distances. Well, it's a bad idea, so better use integers, but uh, points you can compare by squares of distances. Uh, okay, but we don't know direction. So we need to observe that uh, we need to observe that there is some final set of points that are possible for us to achieve, and we are interested in its convex hull. And if we ask about some direction, we will be we will find this possible point, the answer, furthest in that direction. If we also ask the opposite direction, we will find some furthest point. And now, very important trick, we can imagine a segment going through those two points and ask perpendicularly to this direction. This way we will find other points belonging to convex hull. So already knowing some points in the convex hull, so already know, you know those four points belong to the convex hull, always you can take two consecutive points, ask, per to ask using a direction perpendicular to that, and you will find another point. The time complexity of that is O of size of the convex hull, for now I will say convex hull, multiplied by uh, just the tree size, n. It's not even n times h because you don't maintain convex holes. And this is simple, greedy, very short code. Uh, now, what can be the convex hole size? Well, theoretically, it can be n, you might say, because that's the number of points, but coordinates are very limited. And you can say, well, x, let's say x is limit for coordinates, that's like 1,000, is limit for convex hole size. There is even a lemma that uh, you can prove that x to the power 2 over 3 is limit for size of convex hull, multiplied by n, size of the tree, is this the time complexity of this second nicer solution. I will again summarize it. First ask is, let's say, two opposite directions. You will find two possible answers, two possible final points that you will achieve, and keep maintaining this convex hull that you can reach. For every two consecutive points, ask in direction perpendicular to them, and if you find a new point different than those two, uh, then uh, you add that to a convex hull and you recursively ask again for the two connections. If you are careful, you will get this time complexity. If not, maybe you will have here n or x 
but X should still be fine. Thank you. For more from the ICPC World Finals DACA, follow us at news.icpc.global and on social media with our hashtag ICPCWFDACA.